Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Logic Bots. In the previous episode we have managed to finish the first part of the campaign. Today we're gonna have a look at the next puzzle. So first of all, as usual, let's view the level. Oh, oh, we did something similar already, didn't we? Ah, it's actually a maze. It's a real maze this time. <laughs> If we consider this first corner, we would have to orient ourselves maybe alongside the right wall. What do you think? So we could install a sensor that points towards the right wall and then we need another sensor pointing forward. Or maybe we could... Hmm. Could we do that with one single sensor? You guys actually mentioned something along these lines in the comment section. What if we pointed the laser like in a diagonal way, 45 degrees or so, and then as soon as it approaches this wall, it should be able to detect it and it will think that it is this wall and therefore adjust itself. Let me try this again. We're measuring the distance towards the right wall and whenever we are not at the correct distance, we want to correct ourselves towards the left side. We want to turn left. So that means the left wheel will always have to go except we want to turn left and we must invert it or something along these lines and the right wheel should only go whenever it detects a wrong distance here. No, when it detects the right distance. Let's go ahead and build the actual bot here. We're gonna use this bad boy and then we should be having a couple of helper lines already installed. Yeah, there we go. That's all I need in order to add the wheels. This one is the right motor and this one is the left motor. Also, let's add a caster wheel. We want to rotate this a little bit by 90 degrees so it is fixed. Some of you actually complained However, if you look at this, it's a 360 wheel and whenever you have it facing the wrong way, it will adjust as soon as the logic bot is gonna roll. Anyways, that's all we need. No, we also need a sensor, of course. We don't want to turn that 90 degrees. We probably, yeah, we want to go minus 45 in this case. There we go and we should be able to, yeah, let's just put it right there. And this way, you know, we should be able to detect the wall on the right side and at the same time the wall towards the front. Hmm, how are we gonna hook this up? Well, I guess we're done with the build here. Let's go into the circuit board and place these materials. We're gonna have you right there and you right here. I actually also want to install a monitor thinking about it. We're gonna add a debugging tool, the number monitor, add that bad boy here. Rotation, please. There we go. And so we got that in the joint as well. I can place that here, possibly. Good. So the ultrasonic ranger is gonna go into this input and then we can start our circuit. So let's think about that first of all. The left motor should always be on, except certain conditions are true. So maybe we are going to use a dual switch for that and we enable the left motor. Okay, so if we do that, then of course we're gonna turn around. Okay, now we have to detect the range. I actually think we don't have to write sentences for that. All we have to do is compare the number. Now the ultrasonic ranger can only measure a distance of about one meter. So that's what we are gonna start with. Oh, actually, one meter is the maximum, so we would have to go a little bit lower. Let's add a greater than. We can add that right here. And we also want to add a static value, of course. Then we're gonna pass that through here. So if the ultrasonic ranger is lower than, hmm, let's say 0.5 meters. No, actually, if it is greater than 0.5, that's what I wanted to say. We can hook this up right away. If that is the case, then we want to make the right motor go, right? Let me see what that actually did. Okay, we're going straight and we're measuring 0.7. Now it's going below and we are not turning because the left wheel, of course, is still going. So right at this point, we would have to make the left wheel switch around. Um, how can we do that? Let's use a dual switch, I guess. And right here with that condition, we want to reverse the left motor direction, something along these lines. Okay, let's test this again. We, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I wanted to see. Actually, maybe we shouldn't use a greater than. Maybe we should use a less than. That actually makes more sense. I don't know what I was thinking, but we're gonna do less than one meter in this case, okay? So if it registers 0.9 or lower, then this should happen. Let's try this again and okay, that's much better. One meter might be a little bit too much looking at that, but it is constantly correcting as it drops down to 0.9. Let's see how it handles the 
Wow, oh, I didn't expect that. Well, I actually desired that, but <laughs> usually this doesn't work right away. Let's see how it performs with this corner. <gasps> are you freaking serious? That's exactly what I wanted to see. Okay, now we are gonna run into a problem. Not here, actually, but it's gonna go into this direction. And I wonder how it deals with that corner. But we should be turning around right now. For some reason, this logic <laughs> suits me much more. Okay, we actually turned around at this place. Guys, we can do this. But man, there must be a much, much better design. Look at the time goal. The time goal is actually 1.35 and we are already at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Ow. So maybe if we switched everything around, we would be making it quicker through the maze. I guess there are several possibilities, maybe? But there we go. Cool, we actually got the budget and also whatever that achievement was. Let's go ahead and have a look at that achievement. It was complete the level using no more than one ultrasonic ranger. By the way, this was a good clue how to actually utilize the sensor. That's why I was thinking of adjusting it in a 45 degrees angle. However, I have no idea how I would be able to complete the level in 135. So what if we did everything the other way around? What if we placed the sensor towards the other side? Move that part and plus 45 degrees. There we go. Then we need to switch around the circuitry a little bit. I think, yeah, this one goes here, this one there and this one goes here. Let's see how it behaves this way. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, we're taking this turn, of course, much faster than previously. Ah, turning towards the left might be better in this particular maze. We will see. Going around. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should be turning here, which is also great. So we avoided a lot of that. But look at that. 35 seconds is already over. Oh man, I don't think we can do this, guys. Yeah, now I'm gonna go into this little thing. Wow, how can you do this with 1 minute 35 seconds, guys? You need to let me know. This is insane, and now I'm gonna avoid the finish line for a long ass time. Yeah, going towards the left does actually take more time in this particular maze. I wonder, will we still be able to finish it, though? Oh man, I've been through the entire maze right now. <laughs> Ah, there we go. We made it after six and a half minutes. Wow, that's not good, guys. That's not good. So maybe the time we can beat by building a more complicated design. We could do a design with multiple sensors. What do you think? I mean, we've done the easy and more logical method. And now we could do the precise method that utilizes both of the wheels. I mean, right now we're not using the wheels particularly efficiently. Let me think about this concept for a little bit. Maybe we're gonna continue with the next puzzle or maybe I'm gonna improve on this design. It depends whether or not I come to a conclusion. So see ya in a second. Alright guys, we are back and I came up with another design. Unfortunately, it's not freaking working. The circuitry is a little bit more complicated. I don't want to get into it too much because, well, as I said, it's not working. I just tried to do something where both wheels actually can go at full speed, but I just cannot turn around quickly enough and I don't even know how it would behave at the next corner, so... <laughs> Oh well. However, I thought we could continue, so I already had a sneak peek into the next level and surprisingly enough, we have the capability of loading up a couple of our previous designs. If we have a look at the level, we can see this is the line maze. Now looking at this first really shocked me, but then I thought we already build robots that can follow a line, no problemo. Now you can see I've actually already finished it. That was an accident. I uh, never thought that one of our designs is capable of doing that. For instance, if we load up the ultimate build, then we can see it doesn't have any issues following the line so far, but of course right here it does fail. Let's go ahead and use the budget build. Maybe that guy works. I actually haven't tested it with this guy yet. Now this guy of course is very, very slow, but it's also cheap. We could even make it cheaper by removing that beam. And you can see it basically follows the line, but it doesn't turn around quickly enough. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and load up the fast build. Maybe this guy is capable of doing it. Start that up. And uh, by the way, these guys I've built, I believe in the second episode, I've shown off all of these guys in case you're wondering about the circuitry. But also this guy actually fails. So as you would suspect, the line edge build is actually the build that is working. So there we go. I just got two of the line sensors facing down and also the circuitry is right here. Very, very simple. 
simple, I would say. So if we start this up, we can see it is adjusting itself on the right edge of the line. So what we should be seeing is the robot turning towards the right side. And yes, indeed it does. Also right here, it turns very quickly around the edges. So this build, even though it is very slow, actually already works for this puzzle. And I don't yet see an optimization value for it. Maybe we could, you know, do it a little bit quicker or so, but we got three of the four awards for this. So let me actually speed this up a little bit. This is going way too slow. Now, of course, right here, we are probably going to take a little detour inside of the circle. Yeah, we will have to follow around the line here. So this is a very precise robot, I would say. Yeah, look at that. Turning around very quickly because we are utilizing both of the wheels to turn around. All right, we are going towards the finish line. Come on, you can do it. Yes, baby. Four minutes and six seconds. That is not too shabby, I would say. Now, is there a possibility to do this even easier? Let me think about this. We got the knot gate here and we have both of the wheels enabled at all times. No, I think this might be the best solution. <laughs> no, actually, you guys told me there is no such thing as the best solution. And of course, that is probably true. Yeah, I'm actually going to be happy with these results. Let's go ahead and have a look into the campaign menu. We can maybe even do the hazard avoidance or at least we should be able to have a look at it. Complete the level without using any gates. So this is possible for this level. That is kind of crazy. Oh, what do we have to do here? We are going to follow the line. Are these things gonna go up or do we have to be strong enough to push them? What? Are these things all gonna turn around and stuff like that? This is crazy. Let's uh, load up one of our designs. We're gonna do the fast build for this one. Yep. Let's have a look at the circuitry so you know what we're talking about. This is my fast build. Let's start up the button. And oh, yes, indeed. Okay, so we have to be fast enough. This is like a timed project here. Yeah, we got the first one. No problem. Come on, open up, open up. No. Was I too fast or too slow? I don't understand. Then it's going down again. Okay, so... Ah, if I see something, I have to wait. Oh man, guys, this is amazing. Uh, let's actually use this design. Why the heck not? This is uh, good for this purpose. And we're also going to use a laser ranger in the front. But let's do it in the dead center. Uh, proximity sensor. Oh, maybe we should use that, actually. High signal if it detects something and low if it doesn't. So we're going to install that right here in the front. Of course, we're going to utilize something like that. And also we're going to add a LED light on the top here that is going to indicate when the sensor detects something. Good. Uh, let's add the proximity sensor down below and the LED right there. And I guess we can input that right away. So if the proximity sensor detects something, we want the robot to come to a halt. Uh, I mean, to keep it simple, just to test it out, we are going to instead reverse the direction. So it's kind of going back and forth, maybe. If it detects something, it's going to go back until it doesn't detect the object anymore, I guess. Let's try this out. Oh, no, 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 no. That's wrong. Why is the proximity sensor detecting something? Look at that. The LED light is on. Okay, I see. It's actually detecting the ground. That's interesting. Let's uh, move it up a little bit. Something like that that okay and test it out again right now we're going forward oh i like that we might be onto something here so now it should be going back as soon as it detects something yeah waiting waiting and you can go Ooh, guys <laughs> i like this game i like this game a lot i don't know what it is about it but it's absolutely freaking amazing so we're taking this next uh, object, no problem. This is kind of a speed issue here. If you are too slow, you are going to get nuked. And right here, this doesn't look good. Oh, no, no, we're making it. Ah, perfect timing, I would say. Holy cow. Right now, we need to wait a little bit. Yes, robot, that's exactly what I wanted to see. And you can go. Okay, I think we did it. Oh, no, stop, stop. Something goes wrong here. Oh, jeez. It almost crashed on us there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Get out of the way, you wall. Look at my robot. It's so excited to go forward finally again. Cool. Okay, we did it, but we used up a whole lot more time. Well, actually, only 20 seconds more than required. We didn't get the other achievements. What was that? Complete the level with a robot cost of 460. Ours was 500. Yeah, I don't know. I'm actually pretty happy that we solved this puzzle already. Is there potential to complete this any faster? 
Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a mess. Maybe we can actually load up a build that is better suited for that. What if we did the budget build? No, let's do the line edge build or the ultimate build. I want to see what that does. Ooh, yeah, that could be interesting. We could achieve the budget with that. Let's see what it does. It is gonna follow the line. The line following is very easy because the line only takes slow turns. So let me actually try to add the sensor to this design. I'll be right back. And there we go. I did the same thing. However, this time we only used a splitter and no gate. So we should be able to achieve the without any gates, right? Because a splitter is not a gate. But let's see. Let's see if that works. We're gonna speed things up a little bit and see how it behaves. Yeah. Oh, no, we actually lost the line. That is a little bit of a problem. Maybe we can fix that by spacing out these sensors a little bit. Oh no, now it's not working at all because of course the way we set it up, it needs to detect the line. I actually have an idea. What if we just stabilized it with another wheel so it doesn't wobble as much? How about that? Oh, oh we barely made it through here. Oh jeez. Okay, now it doesn't wobble as much and doesn't lose the line. Well, it lost it. <laughs> Okay guys, I didn't find a way to do it without gates yet, but I think the XOR gates are just what we need in this case. The XOR gates basically output a signal if both signals are not the same. So let's say the left sensor detects the line, right? But also the proximity sensor detects something, then we will have a low signal and therefore the motors should shut off instead of going backwards. So let's actually test this out, but I do believe this must work. We are not very fast to be honest with you, but there we go. Yeah, we actually shut down the machine. And also right here, we seem to be fast enough. Let's actually see if we can make the time. I'm not so sure. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get out of the way, out of the way. Oh, what did that do there? Let me go through that simulation once again. Oh, that's weird. It did the exact same thing as before. Maybe I can set up the sensor a little bit more precisely. Okay, let's observe this maybe in slow motion. I wonder what is going wrong here. It shouldn't do that. Okay, we cannot reach the time anymore, but what are you gonna do? Oh, what was that? That was so weird. It didn't behave like that with all of the other obstacles. Oh, well guys, maybe you have a better idea to actually solve that. I'm sure we could also get rid of one of the sensors, but let's have a look at the next level in the campaign, which is the color navigation. What do we have to do right here? Oh, oh, Jesus. <gasps> What? I will have to think about that. Holy cow. Okay, we will have a compass here, probably. Are you guys serious? <laughs> well, that is a thing for another time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.